First, I'll just show you how I would pick it up. So essentially, I would stand directly over the weight. I wanna to get towards the middle of the shingle pile because it's an odd object. It's a rectangle, it's separated. I don't wanna go on either one side. I wanna kinda of sit right in the middle because that's where the weight will be distributed equally. Um, and then from there, I'm gonna kind of squeeze my stomach about 20 to 40%, not like you're trying to flex for some girl or something, but you know, just right here. And I'm gonna bend my knees down to where I can get my body on it while I'm keeping a flat back position. Okay, and then from there, I'll just get my hands underneath. And then once I have my hands underneath, I'm going to use my legs to lift and not my back, okay? So the way I'm gonna do that is I'm going to kind of extend up and then come onto my shoulder. All right, from there, that would be the proper way of doing it, okay? I would never pick this up from this position because you're separating everything. You're a lot more likely to round. I also wouldn't stand way behind it. If it was a little higher up, I would more than likely kind of slide it over, drop down, keeping this tight, and then shift it onto my back from there. Once the pack gets a little bit lower, I'm gonna kind of address it, get my hands under one side first, and then I'm just always gonna be aware of my position. Now, the best way I can say is the further the shingles get away from you, the more it's gonna be pushing down on your low back. So you just wanna try to get it as close to your body as possible, and then just being aware of your midsection throughout. It's just gonna help your back problems in general if you start focusing on your core. So there's a couple ways you can do that. And a lot of people think strengthening the core is sit-ups. And to be honest, I don't think that's the best way, especially for this application, because it's only working mostly the front. And the core is also your back muscles. So when I refer to core, I mean your stomach, your back, and everything in that area. So. What I would do is I would do a plank and you are going to essentially get your hands about shoulder width apart and then get into a basically push up position as most people would know it. But you wanna keep your butt up a little bit higher and almost keep these muscles kind of flexed down like this. You don't want your butt sagging kind of like this and you don't want it like this either. All that's gonna do and what you would do there is you could do like a 30 second hold with a 30 second rest or you could do a max hold. So usually when you get strained, I think the best stretch that I can think of, we wanna really open your hips. Most of the time when people walk around on a day-to-day -day basis and have low back pain, it's generally because their pelvis, their hips are kind of tilted forward a little bit, almost like you're, you're like this. And then that causes you to almost overextend a bit, which puts a lot of shear on your low back. If you're having that low back pain and that I would, want to loosen up the front side of your body. A lot of people would think, oh, well, if my low back hurts, I'm just gonna roll it out. I'm just gonna start getting a massage on it. Well, usually when something hurts, it's usually being caused by something else. It's not usually a direct correlation. So by opening up this front section, what I'm about to show you, it's gonna allow you to stand up straighter and it's gonna relieve your low back and it's not gonna need to tighten up so much. We like to sit in it for two minutes and here's the reason why. Whenever you're doing any kind of stretching kind of to rehabilitate, and if you have a chronic low back pain, it takes multiple times and a decent amount of time in the position to actually make a long-term change. You could do more and more each day. So if you stay consistent with it, I almost guarantee if you did it every single day for about two to three weeks, um, two minutes on each leg, you probably wouldn't have as much low back pain like almost at all. This is also the number one uh, stretch that I would say to get rid of low back pain within four minutes. Okay, so here's how it works. You're gonna point your toe towards the ceiling and I'm gonna get my knee on the wall. I'm gonna slide it all the way down. Okay, so that's the first part. Then I'm gonna take this leg, I'm gonna bring it up and put it down flat. So this is the position I'm going to. Now, when I started this and I first did this, I'm more sitting down here like this kind of agonizing, you know, essentially you're gonna get a, long, a big pull from about your hip to your knee. Nothing's hurting you right there, you're stretching it, okay? That is what you're supposed to feel, it's not a comfortable feeling, but the more and more you do it, it gets much more comfortable and really you're, you're making 
some pretty good change within your hips. And then the goal is now I'm capable of actually sitting up and I'm flexible enough to sit in this position. Now, in the beginning, if that is too much and you like can't even keep your chest down, do nothing like that, well then we just bring our knee a little bit off the wall. But what I will say is that if you feel extremely comfortable while you're in this position and you could sit in it for you know, five to 10 minutes, then you're probably not doing it at a uh, intensity that's gonna make any long-term change in your hips and you're not gonna get rid of that low back pain. So getting your knee all the way wall is pretty important. It's uh, not comfortable, but unfortunately when you're trying to fix something, you know, that's as severe as low back, chronic low back pain or an injury like that, it's not always gonna be the most comfortable thing. 